Welcome back to Black Cat Crypto Club. What is going on with Bitcoin? What's going on with the crypto market? Uh, a lot of people out there in the ether, on the inter interwebs, uh, that are saying they're done with Bitcoin. They think Bitcoin and, and the crypto uh, bull run is completely over. And they're going to get out and get into some stocks, some better stocks, uh, NVIDIA and, and the like. And so we're going to get into all of that, guys. If it's a good time to be selling or whether you should hang in there. Uh, but before we do get into all of that, guys, as always, uh, I am supporting for them Animal Sanctuary. If you just uh, Google for them sanctuary, I do have their link in the description of the video, but you can also just simply Google for them. They'll be the first ones that come up. You can go over to their Animal Sanctuary homepage, hit that donate button, um, go over and support their Patreon, or go over and check them out on social media. Guys, this is a great cause. This helps a lot of um, needy animals that have been abused and abandoned. Always a good cause. I, I um, support different animal sanctuaries every month. So if you guys can spare a few bucks, go over and throw them some love. And it is also good for your taxes. These guys are a registered 501c. Uh, so anything you donate to them helps out come tax time. Okay, so let's get into it. There's a lot of people out there selling their, their crypto and their Bitcoin and getting into stocks because the bull run is over and uh, we might as well get into something that's moving. Well... I mean, if you just analyze that kind of thought mentality, guys, that is what, I, I mean, that's basically the definition of FOMO, like your fear of missing out in, in uh, tech stocks, and you're going to sell out of one thing and get into something that's already been moving for the better part of a year. And usually, I, you know, Honestly, if, if you're doing that, I wish you the absolute best. I have nothing but hope for you guys in doing that. But usually when you're selling out of something and into something else that's already moving, you've already missed the train, uh, you know, and you're FOMOing in and it doesn't always work out. And I think if you are doing that, you're missing the trees for the forest. You know, we're going to get into why that is uh, here in later in the video. But guys, I was watching a uh, podcast, a YouTube um, the other day from Natalie Brunel. And she had James Lavish on and Sarah Riley and Preston Pish. And it was just a great, great uh, kind of get together of all these guys. James Lavish is one of my favorite, you know, honestly level headed, but he really knows the inner workings of, you know, the Wall Street, uh, the Federal Reserve, um, the Treasury, you know, the economy as a whole. So I really, I watch James Lavish about every, you know, I would say every week, if not more than once a week. But I want to jump over to this podcast and just show you guys uh, what he said in response to Natalie Brunel asking why we were just moving sideways and it seems like we should have been to $100,000 already and why we're not moving up. Um, so, yeah, let's check this out, guys. I think that actually one of the big things that people are not talking about is that we're at a price now that we were at three months ago before the halving. And so now you have a ton of small miners. These small miners are using old machines and they have Bitcoin in their treasury that they've built up. 
and they have it there as a war chest so they can sustain themselves through this really rough period where they're not making profit. And I can see that there's a lot of miners that are not making profit right now on S19s and below, right? Especially if their price of energy is up above, you know, seven, eight cents, they're going to, they're losing money. So what are they doing? They're selling Bitcoin to keep operating. So they're making the bet. They're playing a game of chicken. They're making the bet that they're going to be able to, they're going to be able to sustain themselves with their, with their, their cash war chest that they built up through this period bitcoin price will lift and then they'll keep operating and keep be, being profitable again the return to profitability the reality is they should probably just just shut down their machine their machines sell them off to bigger miners whatever take their war chest and go home because their, their profit is there you know now the flip side of that is you know, to, to luke's point levering up which is what you're what you were asking natalie is that if they lever that that short up and they're over short. Well, that the the ones who are shorting that those futures, they could get into a situation, especially if they're using options or whatever. They could get into a situation where they get into what's called a gamma squeeze. Whereas the closer it gets, it really drives that that um, that acceleration that price to like seventy four, seventy five thousand really quickly, and they have to cover, and they wind up covering right through and it explodes through that price it, will that happen i don't know but that was my whole point of you know that the 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 meme of the sun with mercury underneath it the whole point is that if you just get enough buying pressure good luck i mean you're going to get your face ripped off but that's that's bitcoin right all all of this activity for somebody that's thinking of it in like a physics kind of way just think about like you got something that is trying to balance itself and uh as long as this basis trade continues to be there it's like putting more and more and more weights on this thing that's going to flip the scale one way or the other wow and so what i want to be you know uh slightly net short <laughs> Uh, a couple months after the Bitcoin having, as you're going through this supply shock and all these crazy psychopaths that have been like, you know, stacking physical for a couple of years at this point from the, from the bottom. Nope. I sure as heck would want to be. So. Okay. So you can kind of see there, they were talking about, um, miners and what miners, you know, we talk about mining on this show quite a bit too, um, because right now miners are only mining about 450 Bitcoin into existence every day. But what miners have done and what they've always, they've done in the past and they've always planned for the having, because at the having, their, uh, their, profitability gets halved and it's been so funny because the past few weeks there have been several articles coming out saying that mining bitcoin mining has not been profitable as it was three months ago duh <laughs> you know the miners know this then the miners know that the halving happened and that their profitability just got cut in half so what they do is before the having they they stock up like James and Preston Pish were saying, and they they stock up and gain this war chest of Bitcoin to sustain them through this post having era where they their profits just got cut, prices just moving sideways for the time being, and they start selling into that so yes they are only mining 450 a day which is oftentimes being bought up by the etfs five times five five fold um so yeah there is that supply shock but their miners do have that built up war chest that they're selling that out of now what james was saying was that they should just you know, shut off and, and take that war chest, which I do agree, they should probably hold what they have, but they, miners, they have to sell to pay for their energy, right? And I don't, I don't think that little miners, I don't condone smaller miners selling into bigger miners. 
uh, because I don't love that idea. <laughs> I never loved the idea of of the small guy, you know, selling out to the big guy, especially when it that kind of leads to more and more centralized mining for Bitcoin. I'm not sure that's the answer, but I also like um, them. They they started talking about the price suppression being a factor of two things that miner selling, which we have metrics that are show is showing that miners are just selling like crazy right now. Uh, but we also have those shorts that uh, James was talking about and that gamma squeeze, that short squeeze that I have been talking about for months now. Um, and I just love that Preston Pish, you know, says that we're all psychopaths and we've been, you know, buying Bitcoin for cra like crazy for the past few years and uh, that he wouldn't want to be a, on the short side of that stick. So just just interesting, funny to funny to hear him <laughs> state it like that. Uh, but guys, I, I do want to show you guys some things with the ETFs really quick. Um, so this is also another thing that I think is going on, guys, back here, right here in week 11. And I've talked about this in the pre in a previous video was uh, this. This marked the end of the quarter. OK, and this was the worst outflow we've ever had in the Bitcoin ETFs. And what I what I theorized in my previous video was a lot of people a lot of public companies and institutions bought into these ETFs, but didn't want to claim them on their quarterly filings. They didn't want to answer to investors about why they were, you know, investing in Bitcoin. So they sold out this week right before the quarter end because they didn't want to publicly report those those holdings, right? So we've got, uh, we're in week 24 right now and that we will be, I mean, it's this week and next week that are the end of the quarter. The end of this month will be the end of the quarter. So it'll be interesting if we see that again. I, I have a feeling that we're kind of seeing that now with institutions just kind of getting out ahead of it and getting out of their positions in these ETFs so they don't have to report it. So that's another thing that I think is going on. We've got the shorts, uh, we've got um, miners selling, and I think we've got some institutional selling that don't want to report it on their quarterly uh, reports. But guys, this is what has happened. June 7th was that 19th day of inflows, which is basically an entire month of inflows that we saw from the Bitcoin ETFs. You know, 20 days is an entire month in business days. Um, and then we had Monday, we had an outflow. Tuesday, we had an outflow. Wednesday, we had an inflow. Thursday, we had an outflow and Friday, we had an outflow. So last week was pretty much, you know, entirely outflows from the ETFs. However, you know who didn't sell? BlackRock had no outflows last week, guys. Not a single day of outflows from BlackRock last week. So it begs the question, what does BlackRock know or what is Black BlackRock telling their investors? Because something is different there. Um, I don't know, guys, it's, it's very interesting. BlackRock just continues to swallow up Bitcoin like it's going out of style. And it is, <laughs> you know, there's not enough to go around and BlackRock knows that. But um, this is also another chart that I always like to look at. And guys, this is uh, Bitcoin addresses with zero to one Bitcoin, one to 10 Bitcoin, 10 to 100 Bitcoin, 
and 100 plus Bitcoin. And what we've seen again, guys, lately is that the little guy, the zero to one Bitcoin wallets are selling to everybody else, to all of the bigger guys, which is disappointing, but this is what's happening. These are the guys that think they're going to get out of Bitcoin and they're going to get into some stocks that are performing better right now. And it's disappointing to see, but that is what is happening. Um, now, I want to jump over really quick and show you another reason why you should probably be hanging in there. You should be dollar cost averaging in. We're going to look at the charts here really quick. Um, now, this. Uh, green line is, I've marked on here, this was the halving. And we have 57 days. We are in the 57th day after the halving now. Okay, guys. So I want to jump uh, back. We're going to zoom all the way back out to the previous halving, which is in green. And I've marked with this little yellow or this little purple line that is 57 days after this having. So this is literally where we are right now. Look familiar? <laughs> I guess probably not because this just looks flatlined. But look, look at what we were doing. Let me zoom into this and just show you guys the volatility. Whoops um that we had last time you know because it wasn't just a bunch of nothing um we actually had some pretty big volatility here um like this these couple days this was a 10 percent move up this was a 10 percent move down and these are daily candles we have never like this cycle we have not seen the 10 percent volatility days guys so this even though it looked like absolutely nothing there was some major volatility here and so when you think that when we see these four or five percent moves lately you think that's volatility like it was it was double it was over double last time the volatility but the point here guys i want to show you the where we were at having versus where we are 57 days later we were about we were about two percent down 57 days after the having so pretty much just completely sideways you know a couple percent up or down in terms of bitcoin is really nothing so 57 days, we, we were just moving sideways. And guys, I've, I've been saying this since, at least since the halving, uh, that historically, it's, it's just sideways action for several months. Um, you know, and... <laughs> uh, oh, man. And I cannot work this thing today. Um, as always, I can't work this thing at all. Okay, so I want to jump and zoom into what's going on this time. Now, we had 2% down last having during this same time period. I wanted to show you guys where we're at today um, versus the having right here. Oh, I want this tool. Versus where we're at right now, we're about 2.1% up. 57, 57 days later, we are 2% up, which, like I said again, 2% up or down, pretty much sideways, especially over a time period of 57 days. That is just completely sideways for Bitcoin. Now, um again this is totally normal as i've just shown you the past uh having cycle we did almost exactly the same kind of movement 
But if you guys are selling your Bitcoin, your crypto right here, you are missing the tree or missing the forest for the trees. You're going to sell Bitcoin right here when you know this is what lays ahead. <laughs> right now, what you should be doing, you'd be smart to be doing is dollar cost averaging in all the way up until we do get into that crypto summer and get into this parabolic uh, phase of the Bitcoin having cycle. Now, guys, the people who are selling out right here into some kind of stock, we're going to get up here in, into Bitcoin's price and they're going to FOMO back into Bitcoin <laughs> or around here, wherever. They're going to FOMO back into Bitcoin. And these are the people that you hear about in the media, these, these sensationalized stories about, I lost everything. I lost my entire life savings to Bitcoin because they, they uh, get fudded out or they just get bored and they trade out of Bitcoin during the time they should be buying. And then they FOMO back in at the very top and then when it drops during the bear season they get fudded out again and so they lose they do things you guys human psychology is completely backwards <laughs> you know when when you think you should be selling when you feel oh i'm missing out on something else and you you know you want to sell that's actually when you should be buying so guys it's it's a good uh, indicator. These uh, all the people that I'm seeing on the internet, um, on Twitter and and elsewhere that are getting <laughs> getting bored out of Bitcoin. This is actually a, an extremely bullish signal, in my opinion. Uh, it means that we are getting close. You know, all the all the weak hands are being shook shook out, and we're getting close to Bitcoin summer where things are going to go parabolic. So as always, guys, I'm kind of the, the perma bull <laughs> for Bitcoin. I, I think right now we should be DCAing in. I wish I had some more income that I could be dollar cost averaging in. I am unfortunately or fortunately I'm, you know, 110% into Bitcoin and, and crypto already. So uh, we do have that. Now, guys, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the video. I do have some more in this video to go over. But if you, do, if you wouldn't mind, hit the like button and the subscribe button right now, because what I'm going to tell you now is probably going to make you mad and you're going to want to hit the, the thumb down button. Because I'm going to talk bad about all the politicians. So if you have a favorite politician, I'm going to talk bad about him. doesn't matter which side of the thing you are on. I'm going to talk bad about your politician. So first up is the, uh, the Trump guy. Donald Trump says he wants all remaining Bitcoin to be made in the USA. Now you might be saying... Drake, that sounds pretty good for Bitcoin. <laughs> Why are you going to talk bad about it? Well, let's just read this, uh, this post from Trump. It says, says, vote for Trump. Bitcoin mining may be our last line of defense against a CBDC, a central bank digital currency. Biden's hatred for Bitcoin only helps China, Russia, and the radical communist left. We want all remaining Bitcoin to be made in the USA. It will help us be energy dominant or yeah, dominant. All right. So yeah, very, uh, you know, Trump is coming out in support of Bitcoin. But guys, we want all remaining Bitcoin to be made in the USA. I mean... 
tell me you don't know anything about Bitcoin without telling me you don't know anything about Bitcoin. I mean, arguably, that is bad for Bitcoin. If you want Bitcoin to be centralized, Bitcoin mining to be centralized in the USA, I would argue, I would argue that's bad for Bitcoin. Um, but guys, it, it just goes back, you know, but uh, Trump wants to um, come out in favor and get the crypto vote. And it's so apparent, you know, that he doesn't even really know what he's talking about. Now, is that a bad thing? Maybe not. You know, honestly, everybody, nobody knew about bit, what Bitcoin was until they knew. So maybe Trump is going down and getting orange pilled. And in a few months, he'll actually talk like he knows what's going on with Bitcoin. Uh, I guess we'll we'll have to wait and see on that. But the point is, is that politics is becoming uh, or Bitcoin is becoming more and more political. Trump is coming out hard in favor of Bitcoin and crypto, um, which is good. I think it's uh, forcing the hand because check this out, guys. This is the other side of the coin, the uh, the old Biden guy, which is honestly in late stage dementia, I think. Um, but Biden campaign talks to accept or Biden campaign in talks to accept crypto donations through Coinbase. Now, guys, this is the same administration that is suing Coinbase right now. They've called, you know, the SEC, which is uh, the administration under Biden, has sued Coinbase and called them criminals and said that they're uh, uh, um, operating an unregistered securities exchange. So this... <laughs> This is funny because now the administration is going to use this criminal organization, Coinbase, to accept money and unregistered securities for their campaign. I mean, I don't know uh, how much more hypocritical it gets than that, but... Um, but it's good, guys. Everybody wants to be on the side of Bitcoin now. Um, apparently, I think the Biden administration has let it go too far, and they're they're trying to backpedal um, in a way that's uh, just just kind of hilarious to watch, honestly. So, guys. Like I said, now you're probably all wanting to hit the thumbs down button, but guys know that I am impartial when it comes to politics. I really, I'm not taking one side or the other. So if you, if you like the video, hit the like, subscribe, um, hit the notification button and guys know that we should be DCAing in, you know, we are getting closer and closer the the longer it goes on, the more of those paper hands we're getting out and we're getting into stronger hands. And things are going to happen soon. You know, whether it happens in the next month, whether it happens tomorrow, nobody really knows that. But, you know, last this last cycle, it took five or six months after the halving to really go into that parabolic move. So do we have another two, three months ahead of us of absolutely boring, absolutely nothingness, you know, upside, downside, but really just sideways? I don't know. But I sure the heck wouldn't want to be selling out my crypto right now to get into something that's moving. So until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.